The Battle of Silo Heights took place in March and April of 1945 between the Soviet Red Army and the German Wehrmacht. It is the last major battle before the Soviets took Berlin to end the war. This is the Oder River, which serves as the border between Poland and Germany. The border now, but it wasn't always the border. Before the war, this was actually part of Germany, where we're walking into right now, which is now present-day Poland. Oh. This was the German town of Kustrin, originally built in the 1400s, and then during the battle it was destroyed by the Soviets, and it wasn't rebuilt. So some of the rubble or the foundations still remain, but most of the rubble they actually picked up and carted it off to Warsaw to help rebuild Warsaw. And Hitler actually made this a fortress town and put a SS general in charge of it. You can walk around what remains of the town for free, but if you go into the little museum shop, which is just under the bridge where you come in, then you have to pay to enter the museum. After the Soviets captured Kustrin, they now had a large front on the river, which included two and a half million troops and 7,500 aircraft. Then in the early morning on the 16th of April was when the battle broke out and 20,000 guns had started firing, destroying villages and forests. So the Germans would actually use bomber planes as bombs so they would have these other planes carrying the bombers and then they would release the whole bomber plane as a bomb to try and destroy the bridges that the soviets were building so right here behind me this is one of the holes that was created from a bomber plane as a bomb isn't that insane i wonder if you go down in the water if you can actually find some stuff in there that is so crazy Instead of building bridges, another way to get across, the Russians would take bales of hay and set them down in the river, you know, stomp, trample all over them, just keep adding it until it became hard and compact and frozen, and would use that as a makeshift bridge to get across. Our next stop was a Soviet memorial and cemetery for those who lost their lives during the battle. So after the war was over, the condition was that the German government would have to erect and upkeep these memorials. Uh, if they are ever going to make any changes with anything, it has to be uh, in consultation with, which is to say, I think, by leave of, with permission of, the government in Moscow. Uh, and so uh, you'll find things like this. Uh, you're going to see more dramatic uh, uh, memorials and cemeteries uh, over the next couple of days. Across the street from the memorial is a trail leading into the woods to go and see the Zukov bunker. Marshal Zukov was the commander of the first Belarusian front. Uh, get up in there. I'm all Zukov. the way. I'm not Zukov. <laughs> You're not Zukov? Mm -hmm. What's in there? Why is it so small? Hey, whoa, whoa, size doesn't matter, ma'am. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> One of Zukov's major efforts was having searchlights illuminate the battlefield to hopefully blind the Germans, but it turns out it just illuminated the Russians so that the Germans can more easily see them. Right to left against the Salo Heights in this direction. It would have been, would have been a fantastic view. Um, first line of defense. The Salo Heights, second line of defense I'll start with, is back on the heights themselves by the museum. Uh, first line of defense is forward across the middle of the Oderbrook. They turn off the searchlights. Zukov is up here not really aware that there's a problem like this down there. He calls. What the hell happened to my searchlights? Oh, Commandant General, I, I turn on the... Yes, Commandant... And they come back on. 
right? And so there's kind of now that's only going to last as long as uh, as long as the sun isn't up. But for a couple of hours in the early morning, there's this back and forth. Are the lights staying on? Are they not? But as long as they do, they do the Russians absolutely no favors. <laughs> That church has no roof on it, as we will see shortly, but the Germans decided not to rebuild it, just to keep it as is. It's insane, even though it has no roof. It's so well preserved. <laughs> yeah, you can jump in for sure. You guys want to go? I'm gonna go. You know, like it's the most secure. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but like, look at the architecture. It's Why actually so. I don't know if my hips would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get stuck. Probably the other one. My hips are too right, wide. Right here. Oh, this one? And then you can push this. There you go. Oh, you awesome. try it too? Oh. Yep, if I were to have a wedding, it would be in here. I can put the big castle right outside of Curly, like Bamberg. Or... I can see it from here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can see it. Yeah, shine out from the channel. How did you do that? How'd you do that? There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> you look so great. You look handsome. Hey, perfect. Hey, I got the I got the camera on. Nice. Look at him. How did you get up there? So now we're here at Malno, which was the Germans' second line of defense. And on March the 2nd, the Soviets made their first attempt to take this hill, and you can see why, because it's a great vantage point down below. But the fighting occurred down there while they were trying to take it, and the Germans had destroyed over 30 of the Soviet tanks. Again, you're gonna have to get off this road uh, to their right, our left, and run down the base of the Salo Heights where they're gonna punch through a kilometer and a half or so uh, north of us. Where we're standing right now is where the 88 millimeters were positioned, so that way they had the best vantage point for destruction. <laughs> Our last stop was the Silo Heights Museum and another Russian cemetery. To remember and what happened and April fourteenth, nineteen forty five. In the early morning hours, not entirely unexpected by the German command. The Soviet side launches a reconnaissance in force. The fighting centers on the Golso area, where the 20th Armored Infantry Division and the 9th Paratroop Division are forced back by the superior enemy. Our guide said it several times, and we've been to several of these sites as well, but it's just so interesting how the Germans who lost the war are required to keep up with these memorial sites and these cemeteries of the victors who defeated them. I don't know of anywhere else in the world where, where a country does that. So it's just so interesting that even 80 years later, they are still required to have these memorial sites in place of the, of the Russians and the defeat. Rain, right, so Reichstrasse 1, uh, right here, we've talked about a number of times. Uh, there's the uh, there's the, the freeway going from Kustrin through Salo and straight to Berlin. Um, you see a right behind spur in the distance where uh, Marshal Zhukov's uh, OP was overlooking the Oderbruch. This part of the cemetery was placed here in 1945 for those that were killed during the war or during the battle specifically and then over here the red tombstones 
This wasn't created until 1972 to bring people from another cemetery in Silo. And then it wasn't until the 2000s when they actually did exhume the bodies from the other cemetery and bring them here. And then this is to mark those that are still missing. This is an example of the type of searchlight used during the battle. So this was one actually created after the war, but it serves its purpose to show you. So the Red Army had the searchlights lighting up the battlefield, but unfortunately because of all the dust and the mist in the air, the light just reflected back on them. So it actually hindered their, their vision and couldn't see. Conversely, this was a German war cemetery, so those that lost their lives during the battle. And as you can see, they're just plain little white placards. Some of them didn't even have a name or didn't even have a, a date of birth, just a, a date of death. My next video will be the second volume of the Battlefield Walkthrough, The Final Battle of Berlin.